Welcome to the final part of this sort of epic video series. Uh, thanks to you if you have watched all the way through. There's certainly been plenty of content. We started by getting some coded data by a bit of VBA. That then allowed us to do some analysis that broke down performance into different categories. And then we looked at ways you might analyze that performance and five lessons later we are still working on things you could be doing with the data. Just going to go to another sheet here because what I want to demonstrate is that we've actually gone through quite a few different building blocks in Excel. The VBA bit's definitely the hardest and so if you're like me you're just not going to go near that for quite a while. So you could simply copy the code that I've written or Google and find some code that you can use yourself. But what you can do is some of the formula based stuff. You can look at analysis formula like count if, sum if, and average if. We use that to see how many different events each athlete was involved in. We did two types of analysis, one with a pivot table as well. We used an advanced filter to extract out a list of matches and that then opened up the opportunity to look at player form. We utilized named ranges and Excel tables. We had some drop down boxes otherwise known as data validation boxes. And once we had our data set up, we were doing lookup functions. And the ones that I use all the time are index, match, and vlookup. And finally, the bit that often people want to be able to get to is the dynamic charting. What I've done, and I don't want to have a, another video on it, is I created a little team analysis sheet. We created a list of unique matches already. That's on our config panel. Here it is here. You can see that list of matches. We extracted that from the data set, going to the data tab and using the advanced filter function. So I simply pasted that down here and I then used formula to extract out overall stats. So the total number of passes, the total number of tackles and so on. So if you click on any of this, you'll see that there are formula that are doing all that extraction. I then created a little summary table up the top that looked at the analysis by opponents. So we've got about 15 different opponents that we've played matches against, some one match, some as many as four, and just wanted to look at if there were particular trends that we could identify. And so because this is just fake data that I've created, there's nothing probably obvious to come out of my data set, but if you use real data there would be got three different charts just as an example that I created where you could be saying well show me Australia compare that to the Netherlands or what I think is probably the best way to do it is compare that to the overall average another drop down box where you could plot on this left hand chart here total points and see all the different countries shown on the chart there so have a look at that. Um, obviously you can email me for this file. Haven't done anything that we didn't already do at the individual level. I just didn't want to have a whole nother video looking at this particular thing. So team analysis and individual player analysis are very important to be doing together. Let's go and do the final part that I wanted to cover today. And that's back on the coding sheet. I've started it off already and what I've created is just a little grid here that has got our five key categories of player performance. These are the things that we code. Shot, goal, cross, assist, carry, dribble, purposeful pass and so on. If I click inside this grid we can see here that I'm really just looking at our growing data set. I'm looking to see how many of those are positive, how many of those are neutral, how many of those are negative. And then the final stat was calculating of the total, how many were positive? So 16 out of 56 were positive, whereas for carry dribble it was 44% calculated by 21 over 48. And so that can be interesting stat to look at. What I also did was purely looking at positive versus total activities. And so we had positive 134, which is 34% neutral, 42 and negative 24. People often like to do with data during the match is just get a little snapshot. I worked for many years with hockey and because hockey has rolling substitutions, 
you can pull players off and give them a little adjustment to the tactics or the way that they're doing things and put them back on. So if you see a player that's having a number of negative interactions in a row, you might give them a quick break to reset their clock. And so to do that, you can rely on the coach's eye, but the coach might have a whole lot to be looking at and not pick that up. So if you are coding some of the match, you might be able to identify that a particular player is in a little bit of a negative spin. And so what I wanted to do was repeat what I've done here at a team level at the individual level. And so we really just have to do a analysis formula. We're just doing a count if here. There's only one criteria, and that is that the player name equals to what's in column Q. So if I go up to the top here, I'm just going to drag down a little bit because I want to edit the formula manually. The reason I want to do that is because I actually don't know how many rows there might be. If it's a game with plenty of activity, there could be a thousand or more. doesn't matter too much. You don't want to put it down to row 10,000 or 20,000 because then the formula have to work a little bit too hard and it can slow down your spreadsheet. But to have it go from row 10 to row 1,000 seems pretty sensible. And what are we looking for? We're looking to make sure anything done by this player, Andy Johnson, is counted. And so far, it's been 27. So if I double click and send that down, and we then go through and do a position group average. Tidy up the formats. If you then wanted to do a complex calculation, to find out what percentage of those 27 events that Andy Johnson has been involved in were positive, you could do something like this. And it takes a little bit of experience to be able to just think of these formulas. But effectively, we've done half the work already because we've got that total number of events. So we need to do a little count ifs to find out the number of positive ones. So our first criteria range is the same one that we just used. We went to C1000 before, and in that column it has to equal this name. Our second criteria is this column here, and again that goes down to a thousand, or whatever you want it to go down to. And we haven't got anything that says positive, so I'm just going to write it in. And so there's our double criteria count if. And that's saying that we have 16 of those events positive. So we're not done yet. We do need to divide that by the number we've already calculated, which is here. Hit Enter, format it as a percent. Copy it down. We're just going to have to update that. We should be able to just drag this across. At the moment it's showing zero, but that's probably just a formatting issue. So with all three selected, if I choose percent, we get something good there. So we can see in uh, the case of the defenders, Kyle Watts isn't having a good day. He's had a small number of um, positive interactions so far. So would you look at that? Yes, possibly you would. Um, what I've done here in this table is apply some conditional formatting. So let's take a look at how you might do that for the second set of data. So I've got that whole grid selected. I go to the conditional formatting menu and I choose new rule. I'm going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. Let's say we want to highlight an entire row if the percentage success is less than 50. I'm going to choose something um, easy on the eye, which will be a blue. And you can see most of those meet that criteria, so it wasn't a very good option from me. But let's go in and modify it. Manage rules. Find the rule. Edit it. And make that 0.35. 
and so you get the point. You could also do some clever stuff, such as identifying when a player's percentage positive success factor is less than the position group, for example, or the overall group. But ideally, it's just about quickly being able to draw your eye towards something that could be interesting. One final thing to have a look at. We talked about it in one of the early lessons and didn't do anything about it, so I want to do something now. Let's find out which minute events occurred in. There's a very infrequently used function called minute, and if I click on this, because it's a time format, it's going to tell me that it's in the zero minute. We know in sport that that's actually the first minute, so I'm adding one. Don't need the decimal places. I'm going to drag this all the way down. And even though our data ends at 400, I want to drag it down to, let's say, 1,000, because that's what we had just decided a minute ago was our end point. And now what I have just found is that it's seeing all those blank rows as minute one. So that's not good. If I say if this is greater than zero, then do that minute calculation. Otherwise, do nothing. These formulas won't change, but with a bit of luck, we'll see that these other ones do. So you can see now that they're blanks, which is good. So now we've got the ability to do a little bit of a momentum chart. And I would typically do this on another sheet, but let's do it in front of our eyes here. This is just one half of data, and it goes to 45 minutes. So I'm just going to do up to 45. Put a little heading on there. At the moment, we got, haven't got anything to add up. So why don't we do that now? Just going to call it M for now, for momentum. It's a term that uh, was used for quite a while. It's not probably one of the hottest trends at the moment, but it is something that used to be used a lot. So people used to look at was just on the fly how much positive momentum a team had on the basis of how many good things they were doing. So I'm going to treat everything generically, which I know is not ideal, but I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to write a little if function that says if this equals positive, then it's worth one point. Second if, if this equals neutral, then it's worth zero. And because it could be blank, I'm going to put one final if in there. I'm going to make it negative one, and everything else is just going to be blank. And it might be wise to put if error at the front, just to make sure we don't get any errors creeping in that could impact on our chart and formula. And if we decided we wanted to change what those things were worth, we could just go in and modify that formula. For example, we might think that something positive is worth 1.5, and something neutral is worth 0.5. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. Um, it's your sort of chart to be playing around with. All right, now that we've got that, we've got something that we can sum. And so we've got our little momentum. Write a formula that says if that equals the minute that we've got here, then our sum range is the momentum column. And if I close that off, and if I double click and send that down, I now get some data, and I could select it all, insert a little chart for myself, I just need to configure it a little bit. Excel does get a little bit confused sometimes. And so there's our little momentum chart. We could also add an overall indicator of momentum simply by doing something like this, sum. As long as you put the dollar sign at the front, when you copy down, that's just going to update. And so there's a few different ways you could do this one. You could add it to the chart, like so, copy it, and then paste it on. Excel works okay with that. What I would then do would be format the data series, add it to the secondary axis, and turn it into a line. And so you can see that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? 
And without doing too much formatting, you can see there that we've got a little bit of a momentum chart. You could put it somewhere where it would be a bit more viewable. So that as you're coding, you could be checking it out. Hopefully what this project showed you is that even though Excel is a pretty simple tool, it's got the capability to do a whole lot of interesting stuff, be it actually while coding or just as a place to dump in your coded data. So for years when I was working with field hockey and football as the match analyst, I would export from sports code and paste a matrix in just like this one here. And then I'd have a spreadsheet do a whole lot of analysis and these kinds of match report scenarios would be what I'd be creating. Thanks for listening.